Okay. So here you see, um, again, talking about snowballs developing on maps that begin with like a hybrid section. Here is Envious's defense for Hanamura. Um, and it is exactly the same as their defense for Numbani as well. And so the same problems arise when they go over to point B because Harry Hook switches off and they have no generation towards the defensive ultimate. And Taimu, I think, also switches off and ends up going to the soldier. And so they've lost all of that as well. So, you know, there's, there's a massive flaw, I think, with the composition that Envious are running and the way that they're setting it up. Because if you lose and the enemy team has ultimates, you've got no way of stopping them. And you, I think you need Taimu to stay on the Sombra rather than swapping, o swapping over, just until Harry Hook gets anywhere near his defensive ult, because the EMP essentially is a defensive ultimate, right? You can you can use it aggressively to negate and basically win a push to buy you time for your defensive ultimate, or you can use it to counter a sound barrier or like counter something afterwards. So I feel like it, it does kind of fill the role of a defensive ult ultimate if you uh, if you need it to. But here, the f they, they end up losing the fight. The dive comes in from Panthera. It's really good. It manages to catch Chips and Harry Hook. Yeah, or not actually Harry Hook, but, you know, they, they get the dive into them. They manage to get the picks there. Um, and when this goes away, Taimu just uses his EMP at the end of point A. And, you know, like, this isn't him with a misplay or anything, you know. He's just using his EMP because, you know, why not? He's using his EMP because he's going to swap anyway. Um, but I really don't think that Envious should have time to swap in this situation because, like, he uses EMP. There's no follow up. There's literally nothing going to happen. So you should probably save that for Hanamura B because you can get something done on it. Um, and Harry Hook switches over to the Zen as well. And again, just the aggression coming out from Kong Di Panthera wrecks them on point B. And this swap doesn't help because now they have no defensive ultimates up at all. And they have an Ana Zen composition that's really weak to being dived on as well. They don't have this Lucio that can kind of stay alive, buy room, help uh, peel for your defensive line. Apply pressure, 1v1 a Tracer in aggressive positions. They're playing Ana Zen. Um, so essentially, after one fight, they're in the same position as Numbani where... They've got no defensive ultimates in, like, your second stage, your snowball stage, playing into two. Because Panthera, after one fight here, are going to have two defensive ultimates. So they take, like, one junk fight here, Panthera, just to build their ultimates up. Uh, and then... Harry Hook's still nowhere near. That's the only defensive ultimate that they've got on their, um, on their team. Effect gets a lovely pulse bomb, actually. It denies, you know, like, it, it's kind of good because it kills uh, Luffy before he can gen his, the rest of his ult, but he's going to have it up for the next fight anyway. It doesn't really make that much difference. You know, even with the fastest fight in the world, you can't deny Luffy and Waka Waka getting this two-ult advantage. Uh, you know, any fight that they take there is going to generate them ultimates. So now they literally have zero defensive ultimates playing into two after after two fights. You know, one went in favor of Panthera and gave them point A. One went in favor of Envious just there, and they managed to get the disengage, but they're playing on defense, so it doesn't make that much difference. And now they're playing two defensive ults into one. Um, and the difference in how Envious plays the defense here on Hanamura is also a stark contrast to how Panthera plays it. Panthera are much more aggressive. They don't give teams this position where they can just wander in from the top right. Uh, if this was Envious on their attack, I'll show you in a bit, but Panthera would be right up in their faces, and instead Mickey and Coco play really quite passive tanks up top. Uh, they're, they're playing the sightlines of chips so that they can stay alive, but they're also just not applying the same kind of pressure that, Pan that Fisher and Void do when you see them defending. So they get up top here. Envy know that they're playing into two defensive ultimates, so they have to force them out, and they basically they just don't. <laughs> like Coco and Mickey here are both too passive for my liking. You know, Panthera save up because. Mickey and Coco are so passive. Panthera don't have to use any cooldowns. And they don't have to use any abilities to be able to get up that staircase, which means that they can use them all once they get to the top. They got full defense matrix. They got biotic field. They got uh, the, the healing coming up from Waka Waka and Luffy. They got everything they need to be able to stay alive up here and cement their position on the top and actually take a fair fight against Coco and Mickey. Whereas if you pressure earlier, you manage to get those abilities and cooldowns off people as they're coming up the staircase, makes them weaker when they actually get to the top. 
Um, you know, Taimu, when you see him attacking, has to use his biotic field way further back um, just to be able to get them into position. And again, not, like here, because they've taken this engaged fight, Mickey and Coco have now used both of their abilities. The defense matrix on Mickey's basically gone down. The shield on Coco's been broken. They don't feel like they can stay up here, even with the heals coming out from chips. And again, I actually think that this is too passive of them to drop off instead of Coco just going full ham into their faces. I would have vastly preferred Coco in this situation uh, using his primal rage and going into them because you're going to force out Waka Waka or Luffy's ultimate and they're going to try and get around you and, and fight. Because otherwise, in the next fight, they're going to be probably playing into like uh, some other large ultimates. They're going to either be playing into like uh, uh, a nano Coco up top or Harry Hook's going to be able to gen his transcendence for the mid fight so they wouldn't have this two to nothing advantage that they currently have so i think if coco plays aggressively into them here with his primal rage it's still this fight ends up better for them but again they play it passively and they just kind of drop off and this is like passive not defensive the difference between the two is right here in front of you uh so they both drop off the point here and that just gives so much positioning over to kongdu panthera Fisher immediately jumps over there, just like, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile, Fisher's already over there, but uh, Rascal hops over as well, uh, so Rascal hops over at the same time as Mickey comes under pressure, I have no idea why Mickey comes under pressure here as well, I think that's a poor decision actually from Mickey, he instantly gets demecked, because he's playing out of line of sight of both of his healers, and he's trying to take a 1v1 against the um against a winston maybe he was just going for the boop and he was going to come back down but even then i don't really understand why he's doing it he's so important in this situation because they're going to use both of their defensive ultimates just to slam everybody back into spawn if they don't have the defense matrix to reposition they're just going to get fucked and that's what happens to them like, mickey has to use his self-destruct in this position they've used the sound barrier just to kind of to engage and to get all of this position uh and there's just been like a door has been kicked open for this Zen Anacomp to be pressured. There's no way they're getting out the spawn here with Taimu. You know, they're, they're under so much pressure here. Um, so, look at this. Rascal is up in their face, along with uh, Fisher in this instance, I think it is, who's like somewhere around the point. And he's literally keeping them inside the spawn. Chips is discorded. Coco has to use the Primal Rage, literally just to try and like knock players around and open up the passage so that the rest of his players can come out of spawn. And... All of this position is just... Look, I mean, Taimu and Harry are just stuck in the spawn doors. Position is everything on Hanamura last, and they just kind of gave it away. There's so much high ground and different, like, flanking areas that you can peel off into and play from. It's it's a world of difference how Envious and Kondi Panthera defend point, a, uh, point B on Hanamura. So if we skip forward to when they actually play the defense. So here... Oops. Oh, shit. I just started it from the beginning again. Okay, so if, so this is uh, Panthera playing Panthera playing the defense now, and they've they've lost point A. It, it took them a, a little longer for Envious to capture it than Panthera, but not that much longer to be honest. And uh, it, it's pretty much the first fight that they that they managed to win. And so you can see again, these two teams should be in similar situations, right? Envious have managed to build up the support ults because their team won the fight basically. Um, and Waka Waka is on the Lucio. And Waka Waka stays on the Lucio here to prioritize his ultimate, even though eventually they want an Ana Zen defense. So Waka Waka later on goes over to the Zen, but the difference here between Panthera and Envious is that they don't prioritize what they consider like their, uh, their most desired B defense comp until the ultimates are safe, until they, they feel safe that they've got something in the bank to deal with whatever Envious is going to be thrown in there. So, he's on the Lucio, stays Lucio, even though he wants to go Zen, and they start to move forward. And get a little bit of pressure onto them. I think they end up just getting pressure. Oh, I've skipped too, too early here. But Kongi Pathero lose this, basically, anyway. Envious managed to get the point. Oh, that was it. They managed to force out the, the thing from Chips Iron. So that, so that was uh, good from them. I don't think Chips actually had to use in that situation either. So perhaps another pretty weak pop coming out from him. But they've still got the advantage coming into this fight. Harry has the... Uh, Harry has it. And Waka Waka, again, you know, 
he's going to stay on Lucio because he wants to keep this ultimate or be somewhere close to having the ultimate up. And here's the massive difference in how Panthera are defending B. They're aggressive into the enemy team. They don't give them the position to set up and like have their plan laid out and get to attack. Rascal has a Dragon Blade. He's going to use the Dragon Blade to force out uh, support ults in positions where they don't want to use them. Void and Fisher are going to be aggressive and force out abilities where Envious don't want to use them. So this one is where they use the Dragon Blade, I believe. And they're trying to force out a sound barrier before Harry Hook and the rest of his team have position. So they see the jump in from Coco. This is now a great opportunity for Rascal to go in because there's like a gap that's been opened up between Coco and the rest of his team. And so he gets the blade out, he dives in and forces out the sound barrier. And this sound barrier is like, before the rest of his team has managed to set up in position, you can see that people are still really far back. Compare this to how the positioning was when... Uh, when Panthera used it, when they were already, like, they'd already got position and were set up top here and used their sound barrier to, like, get off there. And they just, like, instantly engaged with the entire time duration of the sound barrier. And Envious in this situation, because they've, Kong and Panthera have been aggressive with this Dragon Blade, have to use the sound barrier in, like, a... It's not a defensive manner. They're still using it aggressively. They just used it three or four seconds before they wanted to and maybe they would have held it for even longer just to try and set themselves up into a much better position before they actually had to fight. So, Envious haven't made space, they haven't done damage, they haven't forced any cooldowns out before this uh, before this sound barrier is actually engaged, and even with these early two picks onto Fisher and Rascal, they actually can't overcome the... Look, their, their positioning is still so defensive because they couldn't use the sound barrier to actually get up in their face and actually do damage to these people at the back, and, like force them out of position. So they've got no space with their sound barrier. They, they got two picks, but those two picks are not good enough to be able to overcome the defensive advantage. And the fact that they popped really early on has given Waka Waka this sound barrier. And the fact that he didn't switch over to Zen, which he wants to. He wants to switch to Zen. And he does, I think, after this fight. Uh, so now with... Oh, and they got the nano boost out there as well onto Fisher. So they... They use both of their support ultimates to hold on to that one. But they managed to hold on to it because they weren't able to put pressure on them. And if you put pressure on people, they get far less value out of their ultimates. So here Panthera switch Waka Waka over to the Zen. And this is the composition that Panthera actually want to use on the defense. This is like their strategy, right? So we'll skip forward a little bit to, I think, uh, Envy's have another, like, bum rush, and it doesn't quite work out for them. And then this is them setting themselves up for... Oh, no, they don't have another bum rush. This is literally the next fight. It just takes 30 seconds for them to get into position, and this is Envy is starting to get into position. Um, and this is, honestly, their best opportunity to take this. This was... Envious should have had this one in the back, because... They, they forced a lot of ultimates in the previous fight. Panthera were on the back foot, right? Because they should have had two support ult advantage, but they already forced out Chip Saiyan on the on the point A. Then Harry Hook has his advantage, and they managed to use Rascal's Dragon Blade to force that out. And then to clear up the fight, they used the Nana Boost and the Sound Barrier. So they used a lot of ultimates there, Panthera. So Envious have an opportunity for like a counter attack 30 seconds later. So they come in now. They got four minutes, but this is their best opportunity. And you don't get many good opportunities when you're fighting Hanamura, even if you've got a large time bank. So this is their opportunity to get something done. They got this uh, tactical visor. They've got probably going to have both support ults because Harry Hook should build his at some point during this fight unless he's taken down. <coughs> and Fisher and Void apply great pressure here. So Fisher comes up, jumps them. With his cooldowns active, so they haven't taken the fight aggressively this time. They've, like, allowed them to come in a little bit. But now they're getting up and in their faces once they look like they're getting ready to initiate. Um, so, Fisher leaps up. Gets up in their faces. Gets booped away, though, unfortunately. But Void is up in their face as well. And they're trying to force the Transcendence out of chips there. Like, they know that there's a support ult. They want to force this support ult. And so they get right up in their face. Uh, Harry denies Fisher with that boop, and then he basically just farms Void. <laughs> he was on something like 70%, wasn't he? And now he's on 84, and he very quickly gets up to 90 and then further, because he's just doing a lot of damage over to Void. 
uh, as he was up in their face. And uh, Effect finds Luffy uh, and then finds Waka Waka. Effect literally kills both of their supports. He comes around the left-hand side. You know when people, like, zip across that gap and then come in from the left-hand side? He gets, like, really nice flank onto them, probably when Luffy zoomed in trying to heal Void. Manages to pick off Luffy and Waka Waka, completely blasts the barn door open for them. Big playmaker, amazing play coming out from Effect. And Taimu manages to get the pick onto Birdring, who was trying to do the same to them. So Birdring came around this, I think Birdring came around this side, and Taimu's like in this staircase down here, and just basically shot Birdring and shut him down. Um, whereas Rascal wasn't able to do the same over to, uh, over to Effect, it would seem. But look how well the defense plays even with these just these three players left alive and like the few players that they have left so void is demagged and chips uses his transcendence and then everybody from envious is setting up their position but fisher because he was playing aggressively into them because fisher and void were playing aggressively rather than passively there Fisher is still kind of disrupting, so they still have to deal with him because he's knocking players out of position and they've chosen to try and DPS him down really quickly. I, maybe this is the wrong call because you saw Panthera last time when Coco did something similar and was jumping around with the Primal Rage. They literally just ignored Coco and instead they just focused on killing anybody who was coming out of the, the points, really prioritizing position and damage on the spawners. And instead, Envious here have prioritized getting a lot of damage very quickly onto Fisher to try and eliminate him very fast. Um, I'm not sure that that's the right call, but I'm not sure, so I'm not going to say that it's a misplay. But definitely, if Envious had kept their positioning up, Panthera wouldn't have been able to do what they're just about to do, which is that they bought enough time with uh, with with Fisher jumping around for the a couple of their other guys to spawn and be able to get out of the spawn. Waka Waka's also switched over to Lucio from the Zen when he was on like 50% because he's scared as shit that this is where they're going to lose the point. And Zen's way better if you're just like... Uh, if the fight's really messy and you just actually want to win this fight and you're not actually going to get your ultimate. So he completely sacrifices his ultimate there just to get a better hero for um, for this kind of scrappy engagement, which is not the same as what Envious were doing last time before anyone says. They sacrificed their ultimates to get a hero that works better overall in the comp, not in like a dire strait. And then when it went to the dire straits, that hero is actually pretty bad. Like, the Zen is not good in those situations. And so, with the players that they've got out, Luffy comes out, and Rascal runs around the left-hand side here in all of the chaos that Luffy's forming. He runs around the left and drags everybody's eyes over there by using his tactical visor. And again, this is... Like, Envious were just kind of stuck back in their spawn. And this is Kong Doom Panthera putting on a clinic, showing you just how important positioning is here. Because Fisher's caused dis distraction. Now, Rascal's running around the left. He gets nano boosted as well. Luffy hits him with the nano boost. And so now he's got a nano visor happening around this left hand side that forces all of these Envious players to peel off from their great position on the point to go and deal with him. Otherwise, they're just going to be shooting into. He's going to be shooting into them from the side. So here's Rascal. Uh, he, you know, ideally he'd like to be set up there and just shooting at them, but this is also perfect as well. Like the the idea of him dragging attention over here is also brilliant, um, because he's got three players now onto him, um, and he still manages to trade this. <laughs> uh, effect gets a little bit unlucky, and Mickey's visor's down, and so Mickey just starts shooting. Rascal's only on thirty seven health, but <laughs> it just hits him in the face. And he's uh, nano boosted, and it kills him. So it's very unlucky in that situation, actually. I think a little too aggressive coming out from Effect, probably. But they wanted to shut him down really quickly. So I think that's more unlucky than anything coming out from Effect in that situation. But it's great play from Rascal and Luffy to like put yourselves in that position where you're dragging eyes away from everybody. Allows so much extra room for like Void to come out. Void would not be on full health sat on the point. If the rest of Envious, like if he'd taken this nano boost and just nano boosted from near spawn over there, there's no way the Void gets out without taking tons of damage. And so it's these players like peeling off into different areas or running up top and distracting eyes or Fisher like jumping around directly trying to focus players instead of just knocking them back from the spawn and playing aggressively at the beginning that opens up the Hanamura defense for them. 
Um, so Rascal kills effect, and then Bird Ring here goes massive as well. He finds a pulse bomb kill onto Chips, uh, and then he kills Harry Hook as well. <laughs> it's just, it's just crazy. But again, this is like because you're giving them space, and because Kong Du Panther are playing aggressively and giving themselves that space. So, I think that is a pretty masterful play coming out from Panthera on their Hanamura defense. Is that they're like showing exactly how it should be played, I think. And then you can see, because I haven't really highlighted the aggressive tank play coming out from Fisher and Void, other than in that particular fight, you can see here that the aggressive. I'll just wind it back a little bit. So, here is um, Fisher, Void, Bird Ring playing in much more aggressive positions than their counterparts on Envious were when they were playing the defense. And hopefully you'll be able to spot this in a second. But look, he's right up here. Coco, uh, sorry, not Coco, Fisher has dropped down from the top avenue, walked right up to them, and has placed his bubble literally right in their faces. And so he's doing so much pressure onto them. He's forcing... Mickey to use the uh, defense matrix because he doesn't know whether Bird Ring's also following up with him or if Void's there. So he's like just instinctively putting a bit of uh, peel on the rest of his team. Void's up top there as well. He forces Coco to use his shield early on as well because they're scared of being dived here. Like they're not comfortable in this area because Panthera are so aggressive. And they can't just save all of their abilities. Again, Bird Ring comes around the side. Taimu feels pressured. He puts down his biotic field. <laughs> and then dies. Like Panthera is so aggressive that they're forcing out cooldowns and getting picks in these situations. Look how aggressive they are. Like they're, they're just forcing Envious out of these situations. Whereas Envious, when they were on defense, were just letting Panthera into this avenue. And oops, I don't. Know. Yeah. So Void is just the two of them. Void and Fisher are kind of hopping from there to there. And sometimes they'll let them in and then pressure them up here. And then one of them will pressure them in this doorway. And one of them will drop around here so that they've got some pinch in the back. And then sometimes they'll both drop down there and <laughs> chuck in a biotic grenade. And Bird Ring will play for good effect. And Envious aren't safe anytime they're trying to get this position up top. They're covering themselves. They're forcing Envious to use cooldowns. At no point have Envious been able to just saunter up here use all of their uh, healing abilities and shields and matrix stuff up here to be able to force Fisher and Void away and then been able to engage. Like, that is just not an option given to Envious because Kong Panther are playing more aggressive with their defense. I can't remember whether there was anything else that I wanted to highlight in this particular instance. I'm not sure. Was there something else that happened here? Defense matrix comes onto them. Again, look, like... <laughs> They look like they're splitting out this way, so Fisher drops into the middle of them, pops down his shield, does a load of damage to them. Void comes around the back in this instance as well. Yeah, show me the camera work. Void comes around the back, so he dropped down through the doorway and, like, pinched them at the same time. They're under so much pressure in this situation. Like, they at no point are they actually allowed to get a clean engage off, and Panthera were given the cleanest of engages. They were given a baby wipe to mop up their engage before they, before they got onto it. They got to wipe it with Dettol before they fought. It was so clean that 99.9% .9 of bacteria were killed at the beginning of that fight. So, a big difference between the two teams in terms of how they're like, approaching things. And I think, personally, that this is going to set the Panthera Lunatic High final up for a really awesome series. Because uh, Panthera is so aggressive. Lunatic High, so defensive. It's going to be difficult for Panthera to pull off that aggressive style with uh, into the Sombra because Sombra is so difficult to like <laughs> detect and take out of the fight. But they could do it. If anyone was going to be able to do it, I think it would be Panthera. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, analysis of Envious against Kongdu Panthera in the semi-final. And I hope it uh, highlighted some plays. And in general, the whole idea of these series is just to allow people to appreciate it a little bit more. Like, appreciate the plays that happen when you see them live in a game. Just be able to identify, like, the different styles between teams. And hopefully you'll get more enjoyment when you watch games in the future.